a topic related to temperature, insulation and radiation patterns on earth is the concept of temperature. So heat, this is a type of energy and the measure of how hot or how cold something is, that's temperature. Now many of us have a problem in understanding some of the measures of temperature. Though we use these terms very commonly across our discussions, but quickly, what do these terms mean? So there are uh, about uh, five, six uh, measures of temperature. We have maximum and minimum daily temperature. We have mean daily temperature. We have mean diurnal range, monthly range, annual range and so on. Essentially, in a given day, there is some moment when the temperatures are maximum. Now it's important to note that this maximum temperature does not coincide with the, the position of the sun. Like all of us understand, the, the highest position of the sun okay, right above our head, if I'm looking at regular latitudes, is at around 12 noon. That's the highest position. But what, we, what I'm saying is that the highest temperature does not coincide with the highest position of the sun. That is because there is a time lag. It takes time for the atmosphere to heat up. It takes time for the surfaces to heat up. The time lag could be as much as three to four hours sometimes. So if the sun is overhead at 12 noon, the highest temperatures are recorded in the afternoon, anytime between 2 to 4 p.m. As a thumb rule, we take that as 3 p.m. Otherwise, it can be anytime between 2 and 4 p.m. Similarly, the coldest time is not at midnight, okay, 12, but it is at another 2 or 3 hours after midnight. So, the coldest time is okay, 2 to 4 a.m. and the hottest time is 2 to 4 p.m. So, that's what I mean by maximum daily temperature and minimum daily temperature. So, if I represent that as T max, T M X as maximum temperature of the day and T minimum is the minimum temperature of the day with the time lag that we have. Now, if I take a mean of this, the maximum and the minimum temperature, if I take a mean, what I get is mean daily temperature. The diurnal range, okay, the range within which the temperature fluctuates which is nothing but the difference of maximum temp daily temperature and the minimum de daily temperature. Now, if I calculate the mean monthly for uh, every day I have the maximum temperatures, for every day I have the minimum temperatures for the entire month. So, we have mean maximum temperature and we have the mean minimum temperature. If I take a mean of that, what I get is mean monthly temperature. So, these four measures are related to the daily recording of the maximum or the minimum temperature. Now, these two terms, mean monthly range and mean annual range. Mean monthly range is the difference between mean uh, a monthly maximum temperature. So, for all the 30 days or 31 days, we record what is the maximum temperature for every day and we record what is the minimum temperature for every day. And if I subtract the maximum of the month and the minimum of the month, what I get is the mean monthly range. And I can do this for the uh, year also, the yearly temperature maximum and the yearly annual temperature minimum. If I take a difference, what I get is the mean annual range. So that's more or less these uh, five, six measures. Now I will help you look this up through certain readings from the textbook. We are following climatology by Savindra Singh textbook. And all of you should have this, particularly those who have geography optional. This is not meant for GS students. GS students may just know these terms, that's all. But for others, you may read up a bit more. So we have this chapter number uh, uh, four uh, about uh, temperature and heating. So I'm looking at page number 57. Uh, 57, the first column, mean temperatures. The first line of this, all types of average temperatures 
monthly, seasonal and annual means depend on the daily temperatures and their averages. The earth receives energy through electromagnetic shortwave radiation radiated from the photosphere. The earth, look at the third line from here. The earth's surface receives maximum energy at 12 noon, but the maximum temperature never occurs at 12 noon. The next column, next column, look at the second line, third line onwards. This is why the maximum temperature is recorded between 2 pm to 4 pm. The highest temperature recorded within 24 hours is called as the maximum daily temperature. Okay. And similarly, we have the maximum, the minimum daily temperature. So we have, if you look at the 7th, 8th line from here, it says, the uh, lowest temperature within 24 hours is called as the mean daily temperature. Thus, there is no coincidence between the time of maximum and minimum amount of insulation received from the sun okay, and the maximum minimum temperatures of the air. So, uh, the maximum insulation time does not coincide with the maximum temperature time. The minimum insulation time also does not coincide with the minimum temperature time. There is no coincidence here. It says that uh, uh, this is called as temperature lag. Okay. The average of maximum and minimum, minimum temperatures within 24 hours is called as the mean daily temperature. Okay. If you take an average, like we have taken the average of the maximum and minimum, we get the daily mean. Similarly, the mean daily maximum and the minimum temperature of month is called as the mean monthly maximum and the mean monthly minimum. So again, I can have mean monthly maximum, mean monthly minimum. Take an average of that, we get the mean annual okay, temperature of uh, that particular place. Look at the last uh, seven lines of this paragraph. It says, the difference between maximum and minimum temperatures of a day is called a daily or diurnal range of temperature. I repeat, the difference between maximum and the minimum temperatures of a day is called, the difference is called as the daily or the diurnal range. Similarly, the differences between monthly maximum and minimum temperatures on one hand and between annual maximum and annual minimum. The difference between monthly maximum and monthly minimum. Similarly, yearly or annual maximum and annual minimum. We call these as the monthly range and the annual range respectively. So, it could be a short question. Okay, what are the temperature measures? Okay, of the earth. Now, uh, the next page, uh, page 58, page 58, second column, second column. The last two paragraphs has some discussions on the patterns. Okay, it says, it is thus evident that the daily range of temperature is the net result of daily heating and cooling during daytime. And there are periodic, non-periodic, seasonal, annual, local, regional variations. Okay, and the variations could be because of, it says, conditions of sky, air movement, moisture, okay, overcast sky, moist air, okay, and so on. So, what are the measures and what are the factors responsible for variations in the measures? Why do the monthly maximum temperature vary? Why do the maximum or the minimum temperatures vary? Why does the range vary across seasons and maybe across years? The reasons are related to atmospheric conditions, air movement, overcast conditions, okay, cloudy or not cloudy sky and so on. The next paragraph it says, this is about the latitude. Okay, so, what are the measures? And then a small paragraph on what controls the variations in the measures. The third one. Again, I'll insist when I'm teaching like this, please keep a piece of paper handy. Pause the video and note down as first discussion, second discussion, third discussion. Treat the discussion like we are in the class. I cannot simply watch them, please. So, the first part was giving an idea about what the measures mean. The second discussion is that these measures do vary. There are monthly variations, uh, seasonal variation, periodic variations. And why do we have the variations? The third discussion is about the latitudinal patterns in the variations. It says, page 58, second column, last paragraph. 
in the equatorial region the daily temperature of daily range of temperature exceeds annual range of temperature so in equator regions the variations within a day is far more than variations across the year because across the year the sun okay is more or less not varying much from its mean location if i look at the equator so so there's not much of seasonality in equator that's why the annual range is not much whereas yes daytime and the night time maximum and minimum can be a bit more okay. so the daily range is more than the annual range then it says in tropical hot desert the daily range varies between 20 28 centigrade where the annual range is between 17 to 32 so understand in the daily uh, conditions okay we can have very hot conditions in the daytime we can have very cold conditions in the night time in the night time in the deserts we can have fogs it can be chilling because of lack of clouds that act as blankets so again here we have the diurnal range is more than the annual range a very high daily and annual range of temperature is because of open and clear skies vegetation free ground low relative humidity dominance of sands and so on in the polar areas the daily range is much low okay sometime it nearly reaches zero for the whole day it can be entirely freezing cold so it may not vary as much unlike there might be variations uh, there are variations in the annual range the summers the temperatures can be above zero the winters can go around minus 30 minus 40 and so on in extreme conditions so a short discussion on okay what is the latitudinal pattern of some of these parameters now you also have a short discussion page number 59 the annual range of temperature so the difference between the highest and the lowest temperature is the annual range okay and then again there's no coincidence between when the earth receives maximum insulation and when the temperatures are the maximum and then again page 59 if you look at the first column last paragraph it talks about again the latitudinal patterns so you could prepare this as a short note what are the uh, measures and what are the variations and patterns of the temperature measures across the globe and from this chapter you might also know what are the mechanisms of heating of the atmosphere i repeat in the same discussions you may also add what are the mechanisms in the heating of the atmosphere so mechanisms some of you already know this as a part of the heat budget the mechanisms include okay the energy transfer methods like conduction convection we have latent heat of transfer we have absorption of okay long wave radiations and absorption of short wave radiations and a uh, fifth component is because of the adiabatic changes when the air packet is expanding or contracting so what are the mechanisms by which the atmosphere heats or acquires okay its temperature there are they are the pattern the, the mechanisms related to sensible heat is conduction convection patterns related to radiation and absorption short wave long wave patterns related to okay uh, the latent heat transfer evaporation and patterns related to adiabatic changes so this is page number 55 and 56 okay so something on conduction something on terrestrial radiation convection page 56 has a discussion on adiabatic heating and cooling as the air packet rises it can expand and become cooler the air packet sinks it, it can contract and become warmer the air can circulate convection and of course there are particles there are greenhouse substances which can absorb radiation energy and that must again heat up so in this video i have discussed four things one is what are the measures of the temperature second thing the appreciation that these measures are highly variable okay there are seasonal variations there are periodic vari variations diurnal and even there are annual variations and what are the reasons okay the atmospheric conditions the the lag rate 
the the winds and so on the third discussion was what is the pattern so the book talks about pattern of two things the diurnal okay, range pattern and the annual range pattern okay the equatorial areas and the tropical deserts have a more longer diurnal range but not comparatively lesser annual range whereas the polar regions have almost no diurnal range but very high annual range and the fourth discussion was what are the mechanisms of energy transfer mechanisms by which the earth receives okay energy and the atmosphere absorbs energy okay and of course transfer so conduction convection okay absorption radiation along with adiabatic heat exchange so i hope uh, this is good discussion for a short note on this particular topic okay please look up and revise and make sure you read from the lines that i have suggested thank you